Hello everybody, happy 420, 2021. <laughs> Today we're doing uh, government and security to get your 420 started off right. There's another thing that this date commemorates, but we shouldn't talk about it. <laughs> Instead, uh. let's talk about an evil dictator. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, of course. <laughs> Joe Biden's not smart enough to be a dictator. <laughs> but he is... Uh, mentioning some things that probably are a bit of a problem here in this country and we probably should put some resources toward them biden is rushing to protect the power grid as hacking increases but what about the water grid we've had all the stories about people trying to poison the water supply they did point out in the story that the water supply is dependent on the power supply yeah. so yeah. if we're going to follow the the root of the problem all the way down <laughs> that is probably the place to start it turns out that if you can make some of the power transmission line transformers explode much like uh the semiconductor industry it would take us months to manufacture enough transformers to get the grid restored to normal operation and as a proof of concept some people did figure out that certain transformers if you could inject 40 lines of malicious code you can make them explode. <laughs> so I think the national stockpile should include said high transmission line power transformers. <laughs> and if you're sitting here like listening to us talk about it, just read the article and feel even more terrified about how vulnerable we actually are. Yeah, the power grid is deaf. I mean, we all learned that in yeah. Texas, right? I mean, yeah. And not just that Texas. Hacking, but everybody had their own power problems but texas really accentuated it. <laughs> neglect and uh, abject stupidity is that bad in texas imagine what malicious actions would be or imagine how bad it is in poorer states <laughs> puerto rico did puerto rico ever get their electricity back on i don't think we even count them <laughs> sorry puerto rico <clears throat> there's also uh, been a bit of a a spat in the international circles because russia once again, has been caught with her hand in the cookie jar. Now, ignore the fact that this is the same cookie jar that everybody's hand is in. Basically, right. there's no more room for hands in the cookie <laughs> jar. But once in a while, you smack somebody for doing it because it's embarrassing. The U.S. expels Russian diplomats and imposes sanctions for hacking. Uh, the Associated Press, for whatever reason, led left out solar winds. Do I have your attention? This is about solar winds. Yeah, and uh, it's going back to even, like, election interference. They're kind of rolling up all their complaints against Russia into this one move. Now, to me, the bigger complaint is sort of buried in the, uh, you know, sort of stale turducken of complaints that they have, which is that Russia's, uh, like, whatever the apparatus is, all of the hands in the cookie jar, um, that's nothing new. But what is maybe a little bit new here is that those hands are now supplying criminal organizations with their tools. And criminals that are loose with state-sponsored malware, I think, is the big news. But it's sort of lost in the turducken of confusion of that article. You really think criminals are more dangerous than alphabet agencies with this power? I think that the criminals, it's like in Hackers the movie. They don't really know what they have. It's like chimps with machine guns. But there's so many of them, and it's so distracting that it's easy for the intelligence services to get what they need when they also have that distraction. Yeah, but I mean, as as how much damage could they do? Wait, well, I would way weight it worse on the state. No, nah, because of the encryption, the crypto stuff. Like once they're in, the uh, encrypting the infrastructure covers the tracks. So like stealing the emails and all that kind of stuff. They can steal the emails, and then somebody else comes behind them, literally another criminal, just like we saw in Solar Winds. And we were moments away, probably, from like Solar Winds getting all their stuff cryptoed. And that's a pretty effective way to cover up your tracks. But they would both do that. Well, if the intelligence agency or the one that does the crypto, whatever evidence they have is going to point to them. But if it's just, you know, North Korean criminals or whatever, it's going to point to North Korea and it's going to look different. <laughs> You're underestimating them. Mm. No chance. This one uh, is uh, a confusing headline. I thought, uh, you know, and actually we talked about this, I guess it was last week or maybe the week before, the Lego versus other kinds of blocks. <laughs> Didn't realize that that was such a hot topic. And this one is not Lego. It's Roblox. But the person did use Lego in their name. So I guess maybe we can forgive it. <laughs> but the important thing about the story is not Legos. The important thing is 
no one vets anybody <laughs> in the digital age, especially the what, what we're in now, where nobody shows up in person. You can just do whatever you want online. Politico has this article where the author is incredibly incensed that just anybody, how an online Lego gamer infiltrated the White House press corps, we can't let, you know, plebs in there. That's insane. So I read this this article with a little bit different lens. It was like, what would be wrong with an informed citizen actually asking questions and maybe even a little bit of light trolling? Because Biden hasn't been prepped for that. <laughs> you know that little sheet he's got? Yeah. That person wasn't on that sheet. <laughs> that person wasn't on that sheet, and nor were the list of questions or whatever. But uh, with the way this works is that person that was impersonating other press members that are allowed into the White House press briefing will ask questions on behalf of other journalists as like a favor. And so a few of them did for that person. And how did they get this position of power? They started a couple of Twitter accounts, took free public information that the White House releases. For example, the schedule of the president and the vice president and the press secretary. They put that out, but it's kind of obscure, I guess. So this person would just every day, they just automated a system that went and got it and tweeted it. All the press started using that, and they just assumed this was an important account. <laughs> I think that's exciting, though, because that means the level one news could potentially be asking Joe Biden questions. <laughs> Not after the first one. We'd get one shot at that. <laughs> Woo, go level one news. <laughs> this is a uh, an interesting... I don't... We probably talked about this, but I don't remember it. But you, this kind of makes sense. I mean, I'm not going to do it because I don't trust them. Yeah. But it kind of makes sense, and you're thinking, why didn't we do this sooner? And then you read on, and you're like, wait, <laughs> we did this sooner. It was yeah. just a Jeep pie destroyed it, like yeah. everything else. But uh, Lady Rosenworcel is in charge now, bringing it back. <laughs> FCC urges American to run, Americans to run Internet Speed app to counter Big Cable's broadband data fudging. So what I want you to do is to go to your, you know, your friends or your relative's house that has the most awful internet connection possible and run this app so that we've got good data about how bad it really is. Now they have, where we're careful not to promise anything based on that data. You're not giving them the data and they're not promising they're going to use it, but they might. I don't know. We'll see. Probably depends on who Biden you think he's going to let Rosenworcel will keep running it? Probably. Yeah, I think he'll probably put somebody in there. Mm. Depends on who's got a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, Verizon. <laughs> <laughs> this one, uh, I actually kind of thought about cutting this one. It's There's nothing really specific here, but we do have some statistics that are pretty impressive. And it's not surprising that as we were all moving our lives online, one thing that shot up was online crimes. The DOJ must crack down on the scourge of online crime, crime online scams, whatever. Uh, it's just gotten so easy to scam. Like, you know, it's a, it's a pretty decent hobby in some third world countries. You know, it's like, ah, what did you do today? I scammed some Americans out of a few hundred dollars. No one's going to care or report that. But that's good income for wherever that is. About 800,000 online scams were reported. Uh, that is a nearly 70% increase, but you have to remember that quarter one 2020 was not normal. There wasn't a lot going on quarter one 2020. Even the scammers didn't know what to do in quarter one 2020. Facebook has figured out that my mom is gullible, and so almost every day now she's like, are you sure that I didn't win a Samsung TV? Yes, I am 100% <laughs> sure. <laughs> you should blow her mind and just go buy a Samsung TV and be like, I don't know, this was outside. <laughs> She'll be like, I told you so, <laughs> and then it'll be all over. You should do that to sow chaos if you want, but, you know, because I'll never talk her down from that. Uh, this is a, an interesting insight into some of the, the minds of fringe Americans. I think the saddest part here is that this would have done nothing. Yeah, this would not have accomplished any of the. If you're of this mindset, you got to think bigger than this. <laughs> this is nothing. <laughs> the record dot media reports that the U.S. has arrested a suspect who wanted to blow up the AWS data center. So this Wichita Falls in Texas, a judge today formally indicted a man with a malicious attempt to destroy a building with an explosive. He wanted to. He, he thought it would bring down seventy percent of the internet because you know everything runs on Amazon, but it just would have injured a bunch of innocent people and not accomplished anything 
So you not understand like backups and redundancies? Oh, you don't get that with Amazon. That's a common mistake. A, a lot of people It's like, I'm on Amazon. I'm in the cloud. It'll never go down. It's like, no, no, no. Amazon's 99% uptime. That's for them. That's not you. Well. Yeah, he clearly he didn't understand anything about what was going to happen. I mean, this would have been a big thing, but it would have been resolved relatively quickly. Yeah. So, I mean, compared to what the damage that's already been done to the economy, it's a <laughs> drop in the bucket. We get one of these every week. Well, okay, no, not every week. Last week it was ICE. This week's it's Customs and Border Protection. But, eh, same umbrella. And it's really disturbing that the do as you say, not as you do. Because as we see headlines where they are buying our data, and as we see you know, these high-level people standing behind podiums saying, encryption is not good. What do you have to hide? We then learn this. Customs and Border Protection paid $700,000 to encrypted app Wicker. Yeah, so they're using that internally to try to prevent things from leaking out. But that's weird. It makes it hard to see what they're doing. <gasps> what do they have to hide? So, yeah, that's expensive, too. Don't worry. Wicker has a back door. That's the difference. I'm like, do they? Do they know? No, they don't. <laughs> so, yeah, tax dollars well spent. And this is... Uh, these stories... Someone should do a super cut of these stories. It'll be difficult to do. You couldn't do it like the Dev Emperor guy did. You can't search the, <laughs> the closed yeah. captions. But stories where the punishment and the crime are like in different universes in terms of magnitude. <laughs> this number is tiny. Yeah. Tiny for what they did. Charter must pay $19 million for tricking customers into switching ISPs. Charter mailed false ads to convince users Windstream was going out of business. Windstream entered bankruptcy restructuring. It's where they restructure their debt. That's not the going out of business bankruptcy. That's the we need to restructure our debt bankruptcy. There is a difference. Uh, did they technically lie? Maybe not. <laughs> Windstream has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, which means the uncertainty. True. Uh, we are going to be able to provide internet and TV services you rely on for the future? I don't know, question marks. To ensure that you are left without a uh, vital internet and TV service, you need to switch to Spectrum. And people did. So they did pose it as a question. It was a clickbait, but it was a question. The answer is no. <laughs> they knew that, but they posed the question. But the judge didn't see it that way. I like that they also claimed it was their First Amendment right to just say that kind of thing. And it's like, I don't, I don't think that's accurate. <laughs> well, corporations are people under U.S. law <laughs> because, oh my gosh, what have we done? And uh, community broadband is definitely uh, getting a little bit of groundswell support, I feel like, just because of stories like the one we just read. People are so sick of these ISPs. And the ISPs know this. So they are on a blitzkrieg to create laws that prevent that. And they're actually doing a pretty amazing job considering how unrealistic these laws are. <laughs> yeah. They're getting a lot of traction, but a little bit of good news. Washington State has voted to end restrictions on community broadband. Yes, that's right. The, the argument goes something like this. We have been granted a limited monopoly by law. In exchange, we are going to wire every household in the community, even though it's not profitable to do so. But the reality is that a lot of the time they don't wire every household or there's a difference between the wealthy households and the not wealthy households in terms of the quality of the wiring. And maybe some houses, you know, they just sort of fall off the grid altogether. It's not well maintained. But it is, a, it is a very real economic thing. If you have two sets of infrastructure in a given area, it may not be economically viable for either one of them to continue to exist. So that's the basis for a lot of these types of laws. How many times do you think the rat's nest of Cat 6 has been used as the stock image on these kinds of stories? I think I should go take a picture of some of those little uh, telephone pedestals that people hit with their car. They don't even fix those anymore. So it's just like a it's like a mushroom cloud of wires that are sticking up out of somebody's yard. It's like that's your that's your phone system, everybody. Don't go anywhere near that with your lawnmower. Ah, they don't care. Who uses landlines anyway? Yeah. Over across the pond, they are uh looking to crack down on AI, as everybody is. 
But these rules are probably going a little bit further than we've seen before. <laughs> EU is poised to set rules for AI and a whole bunch of other things because, yeah, the citizens in the EU don't want to be automatically classified by the algorithm. This has a lot to do with facial recognition, the old, uh, you know, employment screening, stuff like that. They're saying, uh, and also uh, facial recognition in uh, public places. You just can't do it anymore. <laughs> They're looking at the stories of the horribly biased algorithm and saying, you know what? Maybe this is not a utopian technology. So Sounds a bit Luddite, but actually it's kind of accurate. Probably not a bad deal, but I think it's going to be difficult to prove yeah. that a lot of companies are doing this because they will keep it very secret. And then we'll get a whistleblower mm-hmm. and then we'll really see how serious they are yeah. about this. That's the test. <laughs> or they'll be prosecuted under the State Secrets Act. Yeah. (laughs) Depending on where it happens, which country probably. And over in France, they are offering to cash in your clunker. But wait, it's not quite the same as our cash for clunkers. There is a huge twist. And um, I haven't, you know, I've never been to France. Does it rain there? I think it does. Oh. (laughs) France is giving citizens $3,000 to get rid of their car and get an e-bike. How does that work in the rain? You wear a raincoat. <laughs> really? Is that how they deal with that? Is it like one of those yeah. whole body ponchos? Yeah, you can do that or you can get like a rain suit. I mean, it's the same thing as like hiking in the rain. How does that stay out of my bike chain? Yeah, you can't do a poncho. You probably have to do rain pants. That sounds like a real pain in the ass. Yeah. Lay ass. I love this this image that someone probably spent a lot of time on. I don't think they spent too much time on this, Krista. <laughs> <laughs> Such a great photo. Look at all the Elon Musk tears. They're so big. Those e-bikes are expensive. I did briefly look into that at one point and was like, oh, that's really pricey. Yeah, some of them, I saw some of them was like five grand. Yeah. It's nice because they give you like the push when you're going uphill so you don't have to pedal as hard, but true. I think the five grand ones can do a lot more than that. I think they can pretty much haul your ass around for... A certain number of miles. Mm. Which is, I don't if you know. have an e-bike, comment below. It still just doesn't. I mean, then cold when it's cold. If it's I mean, freezing, yeah. Ah, doesn't make any sense. Well, there was a big issue in Iran. They have these uh, nuclear centrifuges, and it's really a contentious thing. Most of the world says. Iran should not have nuclear centrifuges. We cannot trust them. They are not allowed to be a nuclear state. But there's a little bit of hypocrisy because the number one voice against them is a nuclear state that won't admit they're a nuclear state. (laughs) Let's keep that in mind. Uh, Iran calls the uh, Natanz, is that how you say that? Atomic site blackout nuclear terrorism according to the Associated Press. So there was a power outage and a series of explosions. Maybe not in that order. (laughs) But the big question is, were the explosions traditional explosives or was something forced to blow up or was it just an accident? (laughs) That's the big question. There are some theories about this. (laughs) The Intercept reports that Israel may have destroyed Iranian centrifuges simply by cutting the power. So they argue that these centrifuges, as you can imagine, they move pretty fast. And there is an algorithm that sort of dampens the vibrations. So if it feels like it's getting too much vibrations, it changes the motor speed, I guess. It's or probably even more complex than that. When you just cut the power, guess what? No dampening system. So they think that that could have actually caused something to blow up. They also reported that uh, no damage was actually done to the facility. But the guy that was reporting that was reporting it from a hospital bed because he fell down a seven meter shaft. (laughs) And broke his legs. And one of the nuclear experts was like, I've been to a lot of nuclear facilities. I've never seen a seven meter shaft. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds like that might have been created by an explosion. (laughs) It's uh, is it like that time that uh, they uh, they blew up the Borg by putting them all to sleep? It's like, oh, it's so simple. We could just make them all sleep, but then they'll explode. It's exactly like that. (laughs) That's where they got the idea, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Mossad was watching Next Generation. They were like, that's it. <laughs> Why did we think of this before? 
<laughs> Over in China, another government that a lot of other countries in the world are not a big fan of, they are setting up a hotline. But if you're our age, this is not the kind of hotline that you're thinking of. It's actually just an app. <laughs> That's what we call those these days, I guess. China launches a hotline to report online comments that quote unquote distort history or deny its cultural excellence. Oh man, <laughs> this uh, this led down a rabbit hole that is, was super dark. There was uh, some lady. There's a there was another story about some lady calling her sister in China to ask because it was like, oh, my sister's complained about certain things in China before and a policeman answered and was like we have your family think about that and then just hung up and it's like is was that real i don't know that's the whole thing is so kim jong isn't it <laughs> yeah kind of i mean they're the the lines are really blurring between those two nation states except that you know china's super powerful and their people aren't starving i mean you could look at the karen subreddit on reddit and just be horrified because like if we had that here do we, we may have that here Oh like those God, people yeah. using that app, like just it's like I don't even I don't like this person, so I'm going to report him to the communist. You know, like oh, I think this person's thinking communist thoughts. That's what we had in the '60s. <laughs> That's uh, you don't know how terrified I am <laughs> that I'm going to go down in a hail of bullets because <laughs> of red flagged <laughs> by the same token. <laughs> Piss somebody off. They can do whatever they want to you. They don't have to prove anything. And it ruins your life. Yeah. And can I tolerate that? <laughs> I got to give a big <laughs> salute to the government of Sweden because uh, the pragmatism here is beautiful. We talk about these stories, and it's usually China or Russia, sometimes Iran, you know, the big three, where we constantly bring up charges against these guys that the state is never going to give up. There <laughs> is zero chance of extradition. They're not going to come on vacation here. Why are we wasting our time? The answer is a headline, but over in Sweden, they're like, ah, don't waste anybody's time. <laughs> Sweden drops Russian hacking investigation due to legal complications. They peeled back the layers of stuff here and were like, oh, it wasn't a criminal organization. It was actually state-sponsored. Well, there's not much we can do about that. <laughs> Click. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. It is crazy that we live in this world where it's just accepted. Because what are you going to do about it, right? Yeah. But what are you going to do about it? Go to war? Mm. Sweden versus Russia? Take out some centrifuges? It'll be a short <laughs> one. And uh, NDIS, I can't remember what that stands for. It's Australian. It's a government. It definitely has nothing to do with Novell Netware. <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> and uh, they are creating... A kind of a welfare type of proof of like prove that you need welfare type of thing. And of course, you got to put that buzzword in there. <laughs> NDIS sidesteps blockchain in government kitchen sink debt chasing app. So this article was a little impenetrable for me because I don't understand things in Australia. But it seems to be that if you've applied for state benefits or welfare or you're unemployed, they really, really want to track your spending habits. See here, we don't. And when you're at the grocery store, the point of sale system won't let you buy certain things. And so here, what happens is people will buy laundry detergent or soda and use that as a kind of currency. It's, you can usually get 70, 80 cents on the dollar. So somebody will buy, you know, take their, their government benefits because they don't need anything. They just want cash. And they'll turn that into laundry detergent, which is on the list of things well, you're allowed to buy. You can't buy that on food stamps. Uh, what's the thing that you can buy on soda, food stamps? You can do soda. It's soda. Oh, okay. So, yeah, laundry detergent is not. I used to work in a grocery store. That was not something we worried about. Soda was something we worried about. Now so. here's here's the question for you: How much would you pay, percentage wise, for welf welfare fraud diet orange soda right now? <laughs> <laughs> I would, you know, maybe ten percent above retail. Not a lot. <laughs> so they're actually going to make money off yeah, of you. Yeah. So, <laughs> but uh, in in Australia. They want to actually track your purchases. So, like, if you're buying the soda or whatever, there is some benefit that you can buy laundry detergent on because there's always somebody selling laundry detergent at the at the uh, the, the discount supermarket back home. None know. of the ones that I was familiar with did. So, like, there was food stamps, which was like just a general benefits card that you could use for any food item as long as it was cold. 
and then there was WIC, which is women, infants, and children. And that was very specific, kind of like the Australian model they're talking about, where you could only buy produce, juice, peanut butter, and like grains. And it was very specific brands. Well, you can you imagine? Buy, like, cereal, can, sugar can, you, cereal. can you imagine having those, those transactions tracked and then somebody showing up at your house and being like, why did you buy 800 pounds of cereal? <laughs> where is it at? Oh, can I see it? And, and WIC was that way too, where it was like, it had to be a certain size. You could only buy like family size stuff. You couldn't buy just like a little thing of cheese. <laughs> and then if it was not right, we had to take it off the order and then go get the other size. And that was exhausting. That seems like a lot of effort to go through. It was a lot of effort. What else are you doing? Oh, you're talking about for the cashier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was. It was annoying. They eventually converted it to like the same sort of system as food stamps but like it was still restrictive so that made it a little bit easier because it used to be a paper check too and you had to go through and manually check everything so well, ultimately australia said we want to do that but we don't know if blockchain's the answer but they already got some other kind of app that's similar and everyone seems to hate it yeah it's a difficult question the whole welfare fraud thing uh but i think we learned and this is one of those things that's just like completely unintuitive if you're a leader until you try it and it doesn't work but once it doesn't work you got to just accept it because they tried to, to audit welfare fraud which was it florida or georgia yeah and it cost more to pay the auditors than they saved by just defeating the fraud yeah so and that's the whole like uh guaranteed income thing too is like let's just pay everybody because even administering welfare is has a massive overhead with it although have you seen the headlines where company after company are complaining publicly. They're like, don't talk to me about jobs. I have so many jobs right now, but people are coming here. They're applying and getting some kind of paperwork and using that to file for extended unemployment because of the <laughs> pandemic. Uh, because so they're probably paying garbage wages and they're like, I don't understand why no one wants to work here. So we're getting record applications. Nobody, we're not hiring anybody and we're understaffed. Then so. raise your pay rate. Krista, you're, you're pulling that out of your ass. You don't know who these companies are. The inflation is real. <laughs> now, if we think back to the San Bernardino shooter, if you recall, that was a big showdown between Apple and the FBI. Apple or FBI wanted Apple to open up the phone. Apple said, we can't do that. We'll help you in some other ways, but we just can't do it. And then one day the FBI said, ah, we don't need you anymore. And we never learned exactly what happened there, but now we know. Here's how the FBI managed to get into the San Bernardino shooter's iPhone. Turns out it was bugs. It was an Australian firm and the FBI pays them. So this is exactly the way that we said it, you know, from the beginning is that eventually you'll get a way in. It's just that it's not a state sanctioned easy button back door. So these are a different exploit to get past the lock screen and modify some stuff to turn off the limiter of how many times you could try the code and then so they could programmatically try an unlimited number of codes. Probably patched now, but what isn't patched right now? I mean, again, it's a game of cat and mouse and it's disingenuous for them to say, we have to have this. They just want it to be easier. Not, they can't do it. It's also an, a game of cat and mouse with unlimited number of mice. <laughs> that just, it's just mice <laughs> viscera everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> We're the ones that are suffering in that game. The cat is treading, you know, like viscera <laughs> to stay, keep its head up while it continues to kill. <laughs> That's how it's going to escape the pit is eventually the viscera is going to be so deep it can just climb out. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the boiling frog. Yeah. It kicks hard enough. <laughs> and uh, Krista, this probably, you know, certainly lends to your feeling that uh, all companies and are, you know, corporations are evil and just trying to destroy their uh, employees because in many cases they are, you know, Amazon. <laughs> We're going to learn more about that in the business section. Yeah. <laughs> and this one, you might think, oh man, I really feel bad for those uh, Amazon drivers because the phone is monitoring everything that they do. But don't forget that your phone is also doing that. <laughs> there just might not be anybody looking at it yet. School custodian refuses to download phone app that monitors location and says it got her fired. It was mentioned in her termination letter. They, they investigated and uh, the person said, well, that wasn't the only reason. But if it's her own personal phone, they didn't give her a phone to run the app. 
I think this is not going to end well for them in an unemployment investigation, at least if it's in the U.S. Now, I don't know what all this app tracks. I don't. I, I doubt that it just tracks what they described. Yeah. Wouldn't no. you say there's probably a lot more yes. than that? But yeah. the big thing that they mention here is it's a geofence. So she works at a school, and uh, she's like one of the pandemic cleaners, one of the extra people that they brought in. And so the geofence records when she enters the fence and when she exits the fence because she's not allowed to leave during the day so it's kind of like punching in and punching out except you don't physically do anything just make sure that you stay where you are seems like they could do that with like a cheap paper yeah, card have to put something on her phone which is her personal property or i mean is that even legal if we did it that way i think the phone reduces how invasive it seems because if this was a bracelet or an anklet, <laughs> yeah, she she mentions that yeah. in the article. She's like, I don't need the, I don't need the thing. Um, those apps are also kind of buggy. So like doing the geofencing thing, like just experimenting with that, it's not a flawless technology. A phone GPS is not super accurate at any given time. So what if you're cleaning, like, the old old boiler that's underground and happens to be ten feet beyond the property line, and nobody knows that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think it's that accurate. I mean, I've, I've seen those geofences not, like that software, uh, not report in for days, but like in the database online, it's like, no, it totally reported in. And it was like, this is physically impossible for it to have traveled this distance in this amount of time. And they're just like, meh. It's alien technology. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Clearly. Uh, if I were to say to you, get ready, get ready to scrape, 500 million phone numbers and you might say oh i already did that last week and i'd say no 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 not that one the <laughs> other one and they're like no no i got linkedin and a facebook last week don't worry i've got them all <laughs> no 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 there's the third one there's a new one there's another facebook phone number database online analysis by motherboard and a security researcher indicate the database is separate from the recently reported cache of 500 million accounts oh no whoops so you can go to a facebook page that has likes and you can contact this Telegram account. You can send them the URL, and they will show you the phone number of every person who has liked that Facebook page. <laughs> now, if, That's a feature. That's not a bug. Now, if that page has less than 100 likes, they'll give it to you for free. More than 100, you have to pay, of course. What an amazing business model. And uh, Vice tried it, called the people, and got some calls back, and they were like, yeah. That is me. And they double checked, and those people were not in the last week. <laughs> I think Ireland is going to own Facebook after that GDPR fine. That's pretty insane, isn't it? This guy's going to violate something. Oh, Facebook. <laughs> Now this one is uh it's it's crazy how many of these we see. It's getting worse and worse and it is, you know, you these days when you hack something, what you want to do, if you want to get real gains from hacking, you hack something really low level that people are going to include in their software without even thinking about it. <laughs> and this it doesn't yeah. get much lower than this. Everybody needs this. Name wreck vulnerabilities impact millions of smart and industrial devices. So this is a bug in DNS. These security researchers were looking at just basic networking plumbing. This would be like finding a bug in plumbing. Like if you say a certain phrase to any toilet on planet Earth, it explodes. And in a not very super easy to fix way. Well, that's what they found. So it's a bug in, in DNS and how DNS works. And because this is such low level stuff, it's going to be a long time before this is fixed. This is a little bit like asbestos or leaded pipes you know there's a lot of buildings out there that still have asbestos or leaded pipes and maybe you shouldn't be breathing in those uh those buildings or drinking the water this is kind of like that those things aren't going anywhere <laughs> so you should not be drinking the data yeah that's coming from a ton of internet of things devices but you say it's going to take a long time to fix let's be realistic what happens it, this is not something that you just like oh just go patch the device the creator of the device has to fix it and then they have to release the patch because it's their specific device and he sung is never going to do that <laughs> that is an impossible amount of work <laughs> that is his entire lifetime of work three times over because he's got to remember what he did 12 years ago <laughs> now let's be honest 
He's never updated any of his Internet of Things. <laughs> ever. For any reason. Yeah, so we're just going to have to throw all this stuff out and get new stuff. Isn't it exciting? And a similar uh, really terrifying bug. Now, I guess this does affect only a certain subset of gamers. But this is a fairly popular game. And I imagine that uh, they, this feature is used quite a bit. Counter-Strike bug allows hackers to take over a PC with a Steam invite. Valve knew about this for a year and sat on it. And finally, the security researchers got fed up, I guess. And we're like, ah, we got to release this. So it's a you have to invite somebody to the game. And they have to click it. So if you get an invite from somebody you don't know, obviously, don't click it. But, I don't click uh, anything ever anyway. They have a proof of concept here. I don't think anybody's ever actually seen this in the wild, but they did prove it can happen. We can run calculator. And I think it affects all source games, right? It does. That uh, Half-Life 2 deathmatch community, they're at risk. Oh. And another uh, big exploit, this one affects the browsers, every browser that runs Chromium. Security researcher drops Chrome and Edge exploit on Twitter. So the Google Chrome team just barely got this fixed, but it's not made it into Chrome, the public builds, and it's not made it into Edge, which also uses the same engine, and it hasn't made it into any other browser that uses the Chromium engine. Ugh. So, great. So watch out for that. Be careful. There are so many examples of, if you go back a year, everybody in power was saying, are you stupid? We would never do that. We would never misuse this technology for that purpose. And it's simply a conspiracy theory to say so. And then one after the other, like many conspiracy theories, here. The NHS 19 app thing, pandemic, whatever, has been blocked for breaching Apple and Google's rules. So this app is like, it doesn't, we don't need this level of permission. Okay, that sounds good. But now that they're actually checking for that, oh no, you didn't, you, you're using this and you said that you didn't need it. You're lying. So it's been blocked. So this is location data. They're trying to figure out, you know, who's going to businesses and stuff like that. Now that things are opening back up a little bit, but they promised they would never do this, and of course, Apple and Google have rules in place to stop this kind of thing. <laughs> I can't help but laugh, because it's funny. You know, one thing that could get me to think about joining the walled garden is if they didn't let any kind of politicians in there. <laughs> they, a checkbox? You should have a checkbox for that. It's like, I don't want to see anything from... Yeah, no software from... No, no, I know checkbox. They have to explicitly excluded at all times no <laughs> government content we could build that community online <laughs> who's going to be the payment processor <laughs> and zoom has their own issues oh, remember zoom they started out with strong then they got really embarrassed by some security issues and then they fixed them and they were feeling good again <laughs> and then they were sending everything to china but here we are with some more Critical Zoom vulnerability triggers remote code execution without user input. Researchers who discovered the bug have earned themselves $200,000. This is Pwn to Own by the Zero Day Initiative. It's one of those security things. It's nice. You know, you find an exploit like that, which is probably months and months of work. So, you know, 200000 is kind of a bargain. And uh, we have some other winners here. Lots of money flying around. Microsoft Teams got one. Ubuntu desktop. Oh, Exchange netted uh, 200000 as well. <laughs> we know all about that one. There's more Exchange patches this week, too. <laughs> so, good work if you can win it. Although, I imagine that's kind of like mining Bitcoin. A lot of people trying to win that prize. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot like those contests that Krista doesn't like where, you know, it's like, uh, you know, design our logo and win $200,000. And it's like, yeah, but 7,000 people are going to be paid zero. Yeah, and also usually it's like, we'll pay you like a hundred bucks, which is not even worth the time that it would take to develop a good logo. <laughs> Some of these exploits, even paying them 200 grand, they might've been working on that for years. Yeah. But overall, it's good for the world, probably. Fixes our crap. Wow, that'll pay your rent, won't it? Well, in this case, it might. But 200, 200 grand will pay my rent. 200 would pay your rent, but... 
And our final story today is a, uh, it's hilarious because nothing bad happened. But it would have been hilarious if there had been a tragic airplane accident. Yeah. Is, yeah. It came pretty close to, and this was just a really stupid software mistake. To a plane and serious incident after every miss on board was assigned a child's weight. So this is uh, from Birmingham to Majorca. Majorca? I don't know. They uh, took off with less thrust than they needed because the pilot thought it was 1,200 kilograms lighter because every female was assigned a child's weight. So apparently miss versus misses. But that doesn't work with children, right? I mean, a children doesn't have to be... I mean, they can't be a missus, I guess. But a missus, a grown miss is not a child. Yeah. Make any no. sense. I think it's a language barrier type of thing it is neat that the software depends on that for a whole bunch but the pilot said that you know he just gave it more on the throttle than the software wanted to and it was fine also what about just a huge child we have them <laughs> yeah just a massive kid you've seen the honey boo boo show <laughs> i wonder what happened let's look that up real quick before let's we not. go this is the last story what happened to her Oh, man. She's probably a teenager by now, right? Oh, she has an Instagram. Oh. It doesn't look like she's doing great. (laughs) (laughs) Who could have predicted it? Uh, You think any of that money's left? April 8th, 2021. There's an article. Watch Honey Boo Boo confront Mama June an emotional reunion one year in the making. So How she's still she? doing reality TV. How old is she? Uh, it doesn't mention in this Is her article. window still the correct size in OBS? She's definitely yeah. like an older teenager now, it looks like. I shouldn't have done that. I don't know. Weird. What a weird little like microcosm of American entertainment that that was a thing. How long ago was that? Very... Oh, so she's, uh, she's like 15. Wow. Weird. That's she was pretty be... young when that show filmed. I guess it's still on, but... Her school life has to be just crazy, right? I would think, yeah. Yeah. All right, well... Uh, what do we got tomorrow? Business and... Social? Yay! We can talk more about uh, Amazon and the horrible things they're doing to workers. Although I don't remember if you put that in the robot section or the business section. Krista, give us a uh, child abuse through overfeeding goodbye. <laughs> oh, how does she do it in the show? Bye. <laughs> <laughs>